If you are new here, hello, I am Brandy, and I would like to give a quick shout out to my mom for this lipstick that I swear I accidentally stole. Sorry. So I feel like the theme of a lot of my videos is holy crap, time is flying by. Cause it's April and I'm like, what? Huh? When? How? Yeah. So it is April. With April, that means it is finally spring, which means a lot more to my northern viewers than it does to this Florida girl. But let me tell you, I can feel that it is spring. I can just feel it. I feel it and I love it and I love it so much. It's spring! So I decided to make this month's video theme spring cleaning. And I'm not just talking about your house. I'm I'm gonna be talking about it all from your friends to your social media to just your mental space in general we're gonna go over it all but today we are talking about your physical atmosphere your environment your room your house your apartment whatever you have that you are residing in we are gonna go through the spring cleaning of it I don't know why I'm this hyper I really haven't had anything caffeinated today but I'm living for it cuz you know what yeah. So if you've been watching my channel for a while, you may not find it very surprising that I love spring cleaning. And I love just going through all of my stuff and getting rid of it. I do that probably every two months just in general because sometimes I get bored. Sometimes I just feel like I need a new switch of environment. But because I had just moved in, I had a whole like nasty section of stuff I wanted to get rid of that I just put by my door. And it was starting to get quite big. And I was just not doing anything about it. So because it's spring, I decided to go through everything I own make that pile even bigger, and then get rid of it. So while I'm not very qualified to give you a way to feng shui or deep clean or clean your house, I'm just gonna go over a few of the things that I do while spring cleaning and going through my stuff and minimizing down to a smaller amount of stuff. Now while I like to consider myself a minimalist, a lot of people might say that I have way too much stuff to be considered a minimalist. So I would just like to state that when it comes to the things that I own and the things that I buy, I try to be very conscious about what I'm buying, why I'm buying it, how long it's gonna last, how much joy it's gonna bring me, which is a thing that we're gonna touch on a lot in this video, and how much practical use it has, both physically, emotionally, and spiritually for me. Now, I'm sure most of you have heard of Marie Kondo. If you haven't, what? She is a renowned author and consultant, and she has her own Netflix show, which I will leave the links to down in the description box below. It's a really great show. I've only watched a few of the episodes, but what I got from those episodes, I can't stress enough how amazing they are. If you are wondering who this amazing woman is, she is a Japanese consultant on how to simplify your life. And the two biggest things I took away from her teachings and her practices is one, really being grateful for that roof over your head and the space that you consume with your essence, your spirit, your body, your things. Because at the end of the day, I don't think enough people are grateful for the roof over their head. The second thing I took from her teachings is things that spark joy. So like I said before, I like to consider myself a minimalist, but the way I used to go through things, I would look at things and be like, okay, I haven't used that in a while. I don't really care about that anymore. I'm not interested in wearing that anymore. I haven't touched that book in a while. Things like that. I was being very practical about it. But then when it came to things that like someone had given me in the past, I generally kept on to that for longer than if I had bought the shirt for me myself. One thing that Marie says in her teachings is when you're holding something, does it spark joy in you? And this is really important because in life, we want to surround ourselves with things that bring us joy. I want my environment, my atmosphere to constantly be one of happiness and joy and positive energy. And I know it sounds weird, but in my opinion, I think that you could have a ton of stuff, like a ton of stuff packed and stuck, piled up all around your house. But if it has meaning to you and is really important to you, then I don't think we should label it as clutter. I think we should see it more as things that you just really love. Maybe you have a hundred records. So let's actually get into the cleaning, shall we? <laughs> into my closet, I kind of did the reverse of what Marie generally says. I didn't take everything out of my closet all at once and pile it up on the bed. What I did do is I took out all the pieces that I was like, I love this piece. I love this piece so much. I would never want to get rid of this jacket or this top or this pair of pants. I included things like my grandmother's dress that I wore to graduation and want to keep forever. And it also included like my brunch pants that I got in Canada because I'm obsessed with those pants. In hindsight, it probably would have been better to take all of my clothes out of the closet, pile them up on my bed, and then take what I loved 
out of that pile and start putting them back in the closet, but I did it in reverse. So choose what you think would work best for you. So once I had everything out of my closet that I absolutely 100% loved, I started going through the rest of the stuff. And I really started, you know, reorganizing things based on things that I'm like, I really like this top. I wear this top a lot. And then things that I'm like, I haven't worn this in months. I don't like this top. Stuff like that. And I was looking at them and like there was one thing that I had in my closet and I've had it in my closet since 2013. So like five or six years. And I really did love this piece of clothing at one time and it had a really really good memory attached to it but I never wore it I could wear it maybe once or twice a year and so finally I was like thank you for bringing me all the joy that you brought me thank you for the memories that I have because of this shirt and I put it in my giveaway pile I think that's the, probably like the third thing that Marie talks about that is actually very important some things you're gonna find that you have such a sentimental attachment to that you want to keep forever but you don't really need that thing and it's not bringing you really any substance to your life it's just sitting there collecting dust or whatever so I think it's important that once you do decide that you want to get rid of this thing to hold it in your hands and really thank it. I know I'm sounding so hippie, but you know that's who I am. So like that's what you signed up for when you clicked on this channel. But holding that piece of clothing or that item in your hands and really truly thanking it for all the memories that are associated with it, all the times that you wore it. Because at the end of the day, being grateful never hurt nobody. And I think it's a great practice that we should all really be incorporating more into our lives. So just sitting there and thanking that one item and then putting it in the giveaway pile and moving on with your collection. While I was doing this, I tried on a lot of the clothes to see how I felt in them. And once I went through all my clothes, I put all of the stuff that I loved back in my closet and I reorganized it so that I had my dresses and my pants on one side of my closet. And then I had all my shirts and coats on the other side, kind of organized together with like crop tops with crop tops, t-shirts with t-shirts, dress shirts with dress shirts, stuff like that. And then I moved on to things like my desk and my bookshelf, which are the only two real big pieces of furniture I have in my room that have stuff on them. So I feel like you can never lose something from reading a book so I've been trying to read as many books off my bookshelf as I can and if I'm like I'm never gonna read this book again or if I didn't enjoy it I get rid of it and so I had a hard time going through my bookshelf to get rid of any books there were a few though that I found that I had read before and I went I'm really truly never gonna read this book again so I got rid of some of those some of them were books that I had kept from acting school when I was in college that I was like I didn't really like what they had to teach anyway so I don't know why I kept them stuff like that I went through my desk and I reorganized each drawer to be a different thing so because my desk is right up next to my bed, I made the bottom drawer things that I might want to reach for while in bed. So like I put my moisturizer in there, I put some of my vitamins in there, stuff like that that I might want to reach for first thing in the morning. And then the rest of the drawers, I made one for my electronics, so external hard drives, camera gear, stuff like that. I made one drawer like miscellaneous, and I made the last drawer like the work supply drawer. And I found that if things didn't go in any of those drawers, I was like, do I really need them? And most of the time, it was the answer was no. So that was going through everything in my room. Now let's bleed out into the rest of the house. So moving into the bathroom, the bathroom is one of those things that I think you should really go through every three months, especially for the women. And here's my reason why. We, as women, never follow the expiration rule on makeup. Don't even act like you do. If you do, for real, like, we salute you. Mascara, I think only lasts three months. I've had mascara for like, actually, I'm too embarrassed to tell you how long I think I've had some of my mascara tubes for. Clean your bathroom, like, give it a nice sprucing up, clean you know cleaning the shower the toilet and the sink and all that but what I'm talking about is going through your toiletries so the first thing I would go through is makeup things that you know are way too old to be putting on your face because as we all know your face and your skin is the biggest organ of your body so we want to be treating it well because it you know is a pretty important part of our body so if you're finding things that you've had for a year two three years maybe you might want to start thinking about throwing those away moving on from that if you're like me then through the years of traveling you've collected a a lot of travel size stuff. This can start to cause a lot of clutter, like too much clutter in my opinion. One thing that I have started doing though is buying reusable travel size containers and putting my stuff that I already use at home in those travel size containers so I can take them with me. That way I don't have to buy a bunch of cheap plastic non-reusable containers of travel size stuff every time I go on a trip. That also means that I can take a lot of the travel size tubes that I already have and squeeze them into 
the bigger travel size compact reusable tubes that I'm going to be using in the future and get rid of those mini mini plethora of travel size items out of my cabinet out of my little drawers and free up some space now the last thing to go through in your bathroom is actually your cleaning supplies making sure that they're not expired because yes cleaning supplies can expire and making sure that you don't have any empty bottles that have mistakenly been put back in the cabinet because I know that has happened to me once you're done in the bathroom we can head on into the kitchen now this is the final room that I do spring cleaning in I live in an apartment currently so I don't have a lot of space to spring clean these are my three major places my bedroom my bathroom and my kitchen I really wish there was a word for kitchen that had a B name because that kind of bothers me moving on in the kitchen it's very simple for me at least in the things that I go through now obviously we're not always the best at cleaning out our fridge which we probably should be better about this is one of those things where we're gonna find a lot of stuff that is expired if you're not keeping up with it so it's just nice to go through take a head count of what you have even in the pantry because in the pantry you might have a whole thing of rice that you didn't know about that you can use to start cooking meals immediately so I think spring cleaning out of my pantry and my kitchen actually helps me realize that I have some like foods to play with, if that makes sense. I kind of like when I have very few things in the house to cook from because then it makes me have to get a little creative with what I'm cooking before I go to the grocery store. I also like to go through my mugs because, I mean, mugs are one of those things that people collect and if you do, that's amazing. If it sparks joy in you, keep them. For me, I don't drink coffee really at all. I use them for tea and sometimes I honestly use them for like when I'm drinking soda or something like that in the house. Otherwise, I'm using my water bottle. So like, do I really need five mugs? No. So I generally try to keep my favorite mugs that I, you know, hold on to forever, one of which is my Costa Rica mug. I love that mug so much. And I mean, once you're done with the kitchen, you can kind of take some of these things that we've already done in the bedroom, the bathroom, and the kitchen, and, you know, take them to other places in your house if you have a big house to yourself, or if you have an apartment to yourself, including the living room, your office, wherever you may want to spring clean. I am a huge supporter of spring cleaning and really cleaning after every season, because as we move through the year, our energy shifts, the energy of the world around us shifts, and it's just kind of nice to have a fresh new atmosphere, environment going into every season. So I hope you enjoyed spring cleaning with me. This is just the first of our April theme of spring cleaning. Hopefully it inspired you to, you know, get up and start looking around your room, seeing what you might be able to get rid of. And I definitely recommend that if you are getting rid of stuff, please do not just throw it away. If you can donate it, please donate it to anywhere, anything, anybody. Donating and reusing things is so important in this world of constantly filling landfills. If you did enjoy today's video, please give it a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you're not already. I post videos every Saturday and you do not want to miss out on a single one. I promise you, you just don't. You just don't. Because I mean, come on. Don't you want to hang out with us every Saturday? Most of the time I'd say yes. Okay, my listeners, I love you guys so, so, so much. I hope you have a great day, a great week, and I will see you soon. Bye!